So the thing that I found amazing here uh, working with Carousel Works for the day is the fact that we're talking about 10 or 20 tons of, uh, of ride equipment moving around in a circle. And in order so for that carousel to be a carousel and not a mechanical bull, we got Jim Jones here. Jim, as I understand it, you're the one that makes these rides uh, move and, and, and in a safe way. Well, I guess you could say that because uh, mechanically and so on, I oversee the construction of it. Okay. I oversee the ordering of all of the materials. I lay out and design the electrical parts, in other words, the drive units that uh, drive the carousel. I determine the speed of the carousel mm -hmm. and what gearing has got to be used, so on and so forth. Okay. Uh, and that's my job of it is to bring everything together and make sure everything works right. Okay. So what, what type of information uh, are you, are you kind of you, you given from, from Art and the rest of the team on, you know, this is the, this is the, the layout, you know, this is probably the size motor you're going to need, this is the gearing. Is that just experience or is that just something that... Well, that's uh, something basically that uh, I deal with. Mm -hmm. That's, uh, they come to me to ask that question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, what size motor do you think we need for this carousel? Uh, for example, a uh, smaller carousel that we have, we run off a five horse motor and we've been running it on a, what we call a ring gear. Mm -hmm. Now the leverage point is quite a ways out from the center, so it runs very nicely. And we wanted to do something a little different, and we're gonna run it on a, what we call a chain drive, which mm -hmm. is a much closer leverage point. So I've had to, for, to find out how it's gonna work, I made sure that I've upped the horsepower, and of mm -hmm. course the gearing completely has to change mm -hmm. to find, to come up with a final speed for that carousel. Huh. And this is my job. Uh, all right, so, so how do you, I mean, how do you how do you come up with that that, that appropriate horsepower to, to to gear ratio? I mean, is that just well? Uh, it's an engi it's engineering. There yeah. are uh, there are uh, uh, charts and so on and so forth when you're dealing with horsepower to speed to mm -hmm. torque to so on and so forth, and what is needed for this amount of uh, weight to get this amount of weight moving mm -hmm. and stopped and and on down the line. So. Sure. In that respect, you, you kind of depend on the charts and also your basic feeling of it yeah. and experience, the past experiences. So tell me about some of the more unique uh, installs. Now you, you, go, you go out to all the installs, right? I would say that the most unique one and one of the hardest to accomplish was the two that we put on the Royal Caribbean ships. Mm -hmm. And uh, carousels, if people have ridden them, realize that that deck, or don't realize that that deck that they walk up on and their horses that they, are figures that they ride are, are all suspended. Nothing is underneath of that wooden floor. Huh. Everything is in the center of the carousel that they don't normally see. Mm -hmm. So they're suspended. And if people will think about it, if they ride a carousel, when they step up on that deck, they're gonna feel it move. Mm -hmm. And when it's going around, they're gonna feel the same thing. Well, on a ship, because of the motion of the sea we can't put up with this mm. and we had to trap that deck that rotating part to keep it into a certain area within a quarter of an inch mm. in all directions that was one of the main things the second thing that they put on us was that the carousel if the ship actually turned over the carousel had to stay on the deck <laughs> So this was a complete whole different yeah. concept when you think about the carousels that we normally build. And then the third thing that we really had to work on was they have a maximum fire load mm. in a certain amount of square footage. And our, we had to take and lighten our figures considerably mm. to barely meet this fire load. And also uh, the wooden beams that we normally used on a carousel had to be, you know, to make it look antique and mm. to be antique type had to be made out of steel. So this was our biggest challenge as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. And for as my end of it is, you know, is involved was that. So how, how do you think um, some of the new design tools that, 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 that Art's using kind of helped you um, in, in that process? Were you, were you more informed on kind of how the thing was oh, wanting to go together? Oh, uh, absolutely. Honestly and truthfully, I do not think, I know we could not have accomplished it in the amount of time we had without those drawings without that inventor being able to show us and being able to make this wheel system that we maintained and kept the deck in position with. Uh, you just can't go in there and say, well, let's change this or change that because you affect too many other things. And with your programs and with your CAD and uh, so on and so forth, you can foresee this. You can bring it up and you can lay it out. You can figure it out. And this is where art comes in very good. My job is to take arts drawings, his concepts, let's mm -hmm. put it that way, and make it real and make it work. That's my job.
All right. Well, Jim, I really appreciate your insight. You know, you guys do Pleasure. tremendously Glad unique you like work, it. and uh, <laughs> you know, I wish you guys continued success. Yeah, I never get tired of hearing how our customers are benefiting from digital prototyping. You know, finally, I head over to uh, meet up with Kate, see how she's using the Autodesk Inventor digital prototype to help market such a unique product. <laughs>